wife left me for another man when I got sick, then tried to get back with me when she found out I recovered and came into money. I, 47M, have been going through an emotional turmoil in my life recently. My wife turned against me and started seeing another man after she got to know that I'm suffering from a terminal illness. It all started around a year back I collapsed in my office and was rushed to the ER. A series of tedious medical tests were conducted and later I was diagnosed with a serious illness. It was a liver infection but if it was left untreated, it might turn terminal for me. My wife was out of town attending her friend's wedding at that time. I didn't tell her about this over the call because I didn't want to freak her out when she came back and found me pale in illness, I had to tell her everything. She was shocked but I didn't get the warmth I was expecting from her after knowing about such severe illness. I won't say she was cold but I felt she was more disappointed rather than sad or upset. I felt like the disease was due to my mistake or something. Anyways, I focused on my healing and remained positive. It was becoming difficult for me to juggle my work and my health. I was advised of major lifestyle changes in my diet and exercise. With this new routine, it was difficult for me to work efficiently at work, yet I tried my best to balance them. Meanwhile, I found my wife drifting away from me. She was not as close as she used to be. Whenever I wanted to be intimate with her, she would ask me to rest or would say that she was tired. It was bothering me and I confronted her. She said she was just stressed out because of my illness. But I highly doubted that because out of concern, you don't push away the person and she was doing that. To distract myself from all this stress, I got indulged at work. I got so busy that I missed following my diet routine and sometimes I even missed taking my medicines. Obviously, that had to come back and bite me and it did. I again fell severely sick and had to be rushed to the hospital. This time my wife saw everything I've been through. She took good care of me. I had to be hospitalized for a week this time and the doctor told me clearly that I have to take my health seriously else the situation would run out of control. I was advised to take a leave from work and rest because work was making things worse for me. Taking a leave from work was just not possible for me. Actually, you see, I don't work for any random corporate or so. The company I work for is of my close friends. He had started it during college. He asked me to join at that time but I wasn't sure if it would fly, so I took up a job instead. But some five to six years later, when his company solidified, he offered me a senior position with good pay. I joined. Since then, I have considered the company to be mine and I personally take responsibility for its growth. I take care of a crucial vertical of the business. I rested for a few days and then again got back on my feet for work. One day I was discussing my report with the doctor over a call and my friend, company's founder and CEO, overheard it. He was so mad at me for not telling him about my health and working overtime for the company. He insisted that I take a sabbatical and rest until I heal completely. I told him about my condition that I may not be able to join work ever again so I want to work as many months slash year as possible and secure my family's future. I had not discussed this with anyone, not even my wife but I was not having a very good feeling about my health. I feel it's going downhill so in this case, I just want to acquire as much money as I can so that my wife can lead a decent life. I got emotional discussing this with my friend and he assured me that God forbids if anything happened to me, he would take care of my family's finances. That was a huge assurance for me but I didn't want to burden him but he insisted that I take a sabbatical from work without a pay cut for 6 months and if I really wanted I could work sometimes from home. I went home and told my wife that I won't be going to work from next day. Before I could tell her the entire stuff, she asked me if I was fired. I gave her a sarcastic look and said yes, because of my deteriorating health condition. I wanted to lighten the situation by pulling up this prank. Her first reaction to this was, are you dying? That broke my heart, how could she be so insensitive? But I played along and said yes. She was like how long? I said I don't know the doctor said maybe 6 to 7 months or sooner. I thought she would break into tears and all that and I would crack up, but her reaction was very cold. She was like how would I manage my finances, you don't have enough savings to cover for me, that's why I've been telling you to leave your friend's company and take a job overseas that pays better, we could have acquired enough wealth by now for me to lead a decent life. The bottom line is she wasn't bothered that I was dying, she was worried that I was dying poor and not leaving anything for her. I wanted to pacify her and tell her about the equity I own in the company, which would help her lead a good life if anything happens to me, but I held back. I wanted to see what she would do next. I think I didn't mention that I was given some substantial equity in the company when we were able to reach our first biggest milestone. The amount in today's time is close to $1.1 million and it is going to explode further as the company grows which I'm sure it would since then my married life has come to a standstill. All conversations have become just transactional, she doesn't even ask about my health. I see her leaving home in the morning and coming late in the evening and mostly eating out. By the way, she doesn't have a full-time job, she works at a salon as a nail artist during peak seasons. All this was disturbing me but I focused on my health instead. Then last month, she came and asked me when we were getting divorced. My world crushed. Divorce is the last thing I want to deal with in this health condition. I was lost for words. She said there's nothing to be shocked about, she has to move on and it's better that she starts distancing herself from me. I sarcastically asked her if she has already found my replacement. 
She nodded and said yes, it was a guy she had known for some time but now she has started seeing him as a potential partner and going on dates with him. I really can't explain the feeling I went through that day. I felt a pit in my stomach. I felt my marriage was a sham. I have discussed this with my friend and he asked me to remove my wife, well, I don't want to call her my wife anymore, let's stick to Jay, from all my legal nominees. I have removed her as my legal nominee in the equity and from everything else. Jay doesn't know about the equity thing because I thought of giving her as a surprise at my retirement. The money would have become huge by that time. Gladly I had not told her, she would have masked her true self for the sake of the money. Edit to add, I'm diagnosed with a serious liver infection and if I don't take care of myself, it might eventually turn terminal. With God's grace, the doctors are still hopeful of my recovery from this stage provided I follow what they say, medication, lifestyle changes, rest, and all that stuff. I was just pulling a prank on my wife by telling her it was terminal to freak her out and that prank changed everything. Update 1, hello everyone, thanks for all the kind wishes. Yes, you guys are right. I feel glad that I lied to her about my terminal illness and got to know her true colors, or else my whole life would have been a lie. We don't have children, my parents passed away a few years ago, I do have a brother but we are not that close, so whatever I have would have automatically gone to her. Despite my deteriorating health, I was working so hard over the last one year to earn enough money to leave for her, and in return, she did this to me. Initially, I tried ignoring her and focusing on my well-being. I joined a fitness class suggested by my doctor, followed a strict diet, went for runs, and did everything to improve my condition, but I wasn't healing at the pace I should have been. I realized whatever good I was doing for myself was ruined by the mere sight of my wife. I could not stand seeing her getting ready for the dates, she would come home drunk with smudged makeup, and we barely talked. She occasionally used to ask about the divorce or comment on how many days of my life would increase by following the diet, it was obviously a very sarcastic and mean comment. Although I pretended that I didn't care about it, but actually I was bothered by it. It was slowing down my healing process or maybe just worsening it. Before this, I used to have a very boring life, it was just work and family. With family, I mean Jay now both of these going out of my life, I had nothing else to do. My friend offered me to move into the rooftop dwelling of the office. It's a one bedroom kind of setup with a small living room where we used to hang out to de-stress ourselves after work. I accepted it because staying at home was choking me. Staying there would keep me distracted, at least I would be able to walk down the office anytime and catch up with my team and colleagues. Just a week of staying here has made me feel so much better. When I was moving out, Jay asked me if I was moving out permanently. I said until the divorce is settled. She didn't call me after that. Only when the divorce papers reached her, she dropped a voicemail with a thank you note for releasing her fuss free. Our divorce process went smooth because I didn't have anything substantial to fight for. I had but she didn't know, the house in which we lived was on a 10 year lease, 8.5 years had already passed, 1.5 years remaining, I agreed to add her name as the tenant and she could enjoy living there for 1.5 years rent free. She knew I didn't have enough savings and I told her I'm using that to sustain for the rest of my days and my diagnosis. So yeah, everything is settled pretty much. I'm now just focusing on eating right and attending my fitness sessions. I have also started joining some important office calls through my apartment to kill time. My latest diagnosis showed positive movement in my health and I couldn't be happier. Earlier I used to have this feeling that I may not live long despite the medication but now I feel much more positive and I'm looking forward to a good life. I'll update if anything develops. Update 2, hello everyone, thanks for checking on me. Like I mentioned in my last update, my divorce was settled and I let my ex-wife live in my house until the lease expired. I was living in the company's rooftop house for a while. After the divorce, I vacated the house. I kept the bare minimum essentials with me and the remaining items shipped to the storage. Yeah, when I went home to pick up my belongings, Jay's boyfriend had moved in with her. He awkwardly walked towards me and said he was sorry to hear about my terminal illness. I just smiled. He asked how much time I had. I said I don't know, maybe some more months. I was relatively calm on seeing my wife's boyfriend, maybe I had moved on or I was just secretly happy dumping my freeloader wife on him. Health update, it's much much better than before. I feel fitter than ever. I have been a lot more involved in my office work than before. Staying at my office building made everything so much better, I was able to work at my own convenience. Now, that my health has stabilized, I'm planning to liquidate a portion of my equity to get my life together. I'm looking for a house to settle in. It's been more than 5 months I've been living in the office building. Though my friend insists that I can live as long as I want, I don't want to take unnecessary advantage of his kindness. In between all this, I got a text from an unknown number, identifying herself as AP's wife. She requested a meeting. I agreed. When I met her, she asked me about my health. She looked somewhat surprised and said I didn't look like I was suffering from a terminal illness. I smiled and asked her what else she knows about me and why she wanted to meet me. She told me that her husband had an affair with Jay for more than two years but they had kept it hidden. After my illness came out, and my wife got the house, AP told his wife about the affair, left her, and moved into my house. 
I was perplexed because Jay knew that the house is leased and not owned. Also, she had just put up an act of finding another man because of my illness but in real she had been cheating on me way before that. AP's wife was devastated by all this because according to her, Jay had lured her husband into the affair because two years back he got an inheritance money from his father. AP looks quite older than us, maybe in the late 50s and they have grown up kids as well. She was okay to reconcile with her husband if Jay left him alone and hence wanted my help. I asked her if she was sure about this because AP has been cheating on her for two years. She said yes, because she didn't want a broken family and they had plans of retiring together and now she cannot fathom living alone in the retirement age of her life. I'm not judging her at all, it's her choice if she wants to get back with her cheating husband. They were not yet divorced. I dropped the truth about my health and she was delighted. She congratulated me on my recovery. She asked me about my next plan and I told her that I was planning to have my own place that's when I told her that the house in which Jay and AP were living was not owned but leased for the next 1.5 years. Her eyes lit up with all this information. I understood what she was going to do. She thanked me and left. The next morning I woke up with my phone buzzing non-stop from Jay's calls and messages. There were several voice notes that said, why did you lie about your health? Why didn't you tell me about your recovery? You cheated by hiding about the equity thing. It was so funny to hear all those panic messages. She then visited my office. I saw her through the conference room yet asked the receptionist to let her wait for a couple of hours. I know it sounds evil to say this but I enjoyed seeing her anxious. The tables have turned. Months ago, I was living my life in the same anxiety and desperation seeing her getting ready for her dates and coming back home drunk late night. When she was finally let into my cabin, she stormed inside and shouted at me. The same thing that she said on voicemails. I heard every bit of it. Rather I enjoyed her rage. It was coming from a place of misery. I smirked at her and asked how long she had been cheating on me. She stood silent. She tried to lie that it was only after my illness. I gave her the look that I knew it all. I asked her to confess everything, told her I knew she had been seeing AP for two years, asked her if she was with me only for money. She confessed it was just casual friendship which meant nothing, it was only after the news of terminal illness that she slept with AP. I was like, cool, this is what you do when your husband is dying, you sleep with another man. She was still lying. I pestered her to speak the truth. She started crying and pleading to get back together. She said I had no substantial savings so when she got to know that AP inherited a million dollars wealth from his father, she went behind him. But AP was not ready to leave his wife until Jay proved herself to be worth and not a gold digger. So, she offered to give the house to AP if he left his wife and married Jay. So yeah, she was planning to deceive him as well but AP's wife discovered me and dropped the truth bomb just at the right time. I smiled and asked her to leave. She requested to meet for dinner. I refused and asked her to leave. She was like, now that everything is sorted, let's get back together and restart our lives, now I have no complaints from you. She tried to use her tears to get away with her request but she forgot that she was no longer my wife and that I would give in to all her demands. I asked her to leave else I would call security on her. I tell you, nothing is more fulfilling than seeing the defeated face of your cheater partner. I'll update after settling down with my new life. Update 3, hey people, I'm feeling so happy to write this update. My latest diagnosis report confirms that I have healed completely. I have lost almost 25 pounds from the time I was diagnosed with liver disease. It had to do a lot with my lifestyle. I was so busy making money for my family, read ex-wife, that I didn't care about my health. And of all it for what? For nothing. She divorced me as soon as she got to know I was dying. The last I updated on this thread was Jay showing up at my workplace asking for a chance. Actually what happened was, after meeting with me, AP's wife went straight to AP and told him that Jay was a gold digger and was with him just for the money. Until now, AP was defending Jay because she had let him move into the house. But when he got to know that the house was leased and she soon would be completely dependent on him, he felt betrayed. There were several other lies Jay had told him to manipulate him into her skirts. She was indeed behind him for his inheritance money but AP's wife was adamant about not letting that money go to Jay because it was for her children. Eventually, AP's wife was successful in throwing out Jay from AP's life. I don't know what dynamics AP was having with his wife and his family. AP's wife used to be in touch with me earlier and gave me updates but now we don't talk. I asked her a few times how could she forgive her husband's cheating but she was reluctant to take personal questions so I didn't ask her further. Ex-wife tried all means to reconcile with me, calls, emails, texts. When it became too much, I blocked her from all platforms. When she got to know that I was getting a place for myself, she showed up at my office and sent me flowers and gifts at work. The thing is she doesn't have a job. The house lease is about to expire in a couple of months. I got to know from one of my neighbor buddies that Jay had rented out one of the rooms of the house to a bachelor for over a year. The rent covers her other expenses. I don't know how else she is surviving without an income, maybe she's sleeping with other men for other stuff. Anyways, now I believe everything happens for a reason, a good reason. My health is sorted. I have bought a place for myself. It's a small two-bedroom penthouse but it is cozy and I have designed it to my taste. I couldn't be happier. 
A lot of you, even my friends and family recommended that I start dating again, or at least start meeting women. I'm yet to do that. Some of the office juniors recommended social media platforms, especially for 45 plus age group people who are restarting their lives as 2.0. I have installed it but not very confident about getting into the modern dating game. People have also cautioned me against scammers on these dating sites, so I'm slightly scared. Just don't want to get into any new mess again. Any tips or suggestions are highly appreciated. Thanks for all the support and advice. Now on to the next story. Story 2. Discovered my wife went on a honeymoon with her AP, after our marriage. Then I went to her work and exposed them. I, 29 male, had just relocated to a new city. It was during one of those nights of trying to get acquainted with the new surroundings that I met my current wife. We would go on to date for a year before tying the knot shortly after. The initial stages of our relationship were pretty much like any other new marriage. Blissful, full of adoration for each other, and wanting to spend any chance you get together. But some red flags were already looming in the background. While dating, my wife had a lucrative job that came with many perks and benefits that would trickle down to me by virtue of being her better half. My wife introduced me to her boss and seemed to be going on well as we got along just fine. I had to play the supportive husband as my wife's job entailed a lot of traveling to various states for meetings. I didn't make much out of it, as it was usually a team traveling together with their boss in tow. I never complained until this one time, two weeks after the wedding when my wife talked of going on a business trip with her boss only. It only seemed right that we spend a bit more time together since we were still in the honeymoon phase. I mentioned the same to her and even tried to stop her, but a furious fight occurred instead. We had never had a fight before. She called me unreasonable and I couldn't help but wonder a little about these business trips. In the end, she definitely still traveled with her boss, totally disregarding my feelings. Feeling distraught, I turned to my friends for advice and their take on the matter. In unison, they all suspected that something W is amiss. This just escalated my curiosity, but I had no option but to wait for her return. As it was pointless trying to have a serious discussion with her right then. She came back after a week. I played it cool to avert any suspicion. I attempted to unlock her phone when she slept to no avail. She had altered her pin. Undeterred, I secretly watched her moves for the next few days with the hopes of retrieving the pin. That came to fruition as I saw her key it in and mastered it. When I next got a hold of her phone, I wasn't ready for what met my eyes. My wife had changed her boss's name to a woman's. But I was able to join the dots because of the nature of the conversation in the threads and the numerous nudes exchanged between the two. You can imagine my shock. She had been unfaithful all along. I felt so torn and confused. The so-called business trip was what she considered her real honeymoon. Those were the exact words she used while chatting with her boss. It now became apparent that she had gotten married to me to conceal the rumors going around about dating her boss, a married man. Suddenly JT hit me that all the benefits and preferential treatment she got from her boss were due to their affair and not on merits. How could have been so gullibles but whoever thinks straight when so deep in love and at the initial stages of a hopeful marriage full of hopes, dreams and plans together hooked screenshots and sent them to my phone for evidence and discreetly deleted any traces of these acts. I'm not sure if it was my fury that made me avenge but I just know despite her hurting me, I wasn't proud of what I did after. I took my wife's computer and edited her presentation that was due the next morning. I opted to add an intimate photo of her and her boss from their recent honeymoon as the second slide, leaving everything else untouched, and as expected. The next morning she went to work with her presentation unsuspecting of anything. About an hour later, I received a call from a very frantic and hysterical wife of mine. She had done the presentation and instead exposed herself and her boss to all and sundry. She had the audacity to say I had ruined her life and all that she had worked for. What ensued next was her coming home raving mad and trying to hit me. I asked her to leave to avoid any other confrontations at that point, and she refused. Luckily her cousin lives nearby so I called on her to come and salvage the situation, after explaining what had transpired. She came in and whisked my wife away as she kept screaming at the top of her voice causing drama. I just wanted peace of mind and somehow felt relieved for how she felt because frankly, she deserved it and more. So far I've filed for an annulment of the marriage. We've only been married for under a month, and I don't wish to be associated with her in any way, ever. So, I'll emerge pretty unscathed except for the tremendous emotional trauma. My wife who doesn't even deserve that title tried slithering her way back to her boss's arms. But he too wanted nothing to do with her. He opted to now focus on his family going forward. She has become miserable and a shadow of herself, depressed. So, I'm wondering, was it worth it to throw a good man in marriage to boot under the bus? All the time, emotions, and money I invested in this held no water after all. I felt so betrayed, used, heartbroken, and sad for all the time I wasted that I'll never get back. All in all, I've taken my lessons and have decided to take it one day at a time as I await for the annulment to be finalized.